So thanks. Um, yeah, I'm Vadim. I'm from the University of Chicago and working with Andre and Nick Nazan on this project. Um, yeah, so uh, some of the results I'll show are already published, and you can check out this paper uh, for the details and more results yet to come, hopefully soon. So um, as Andre already told you, uh, we should all use low efficiencies in uh, galaxy mirror simulations in order to produce uh, realistic galaxies. Uh, and uh, ideally, these efficiencies should be based on some uh, physical picture of what is going on on uh, unresolved scales. Uh, and this actually applies to any uh, piece of uh, subgrid physics you include in your code. Uh, and uh, one of the options is to use uh, direct simulations of physical processes uh, going on unresolved scales, and then use the results of these simulations as your subgrid models in uh, galaxy formation simulations. Um, so we do this uh, modeling of galaxies with the star formation and stellar feedback prescription that follows from such kind of simulations. And this is what we mean by this word, uh, realistic. Uh, so for uh, star formation uh, prescription, we use the results of uh, Padon et al., as uh, Andre told you, uh, who simulate um, uh, jet molecular clouds and star formation going on this uh, turbulent, uh, supersonically turbulent uh, objects with solid gravity and magnetic fields. And they found that the uh, um, total efficiency of star formation in these clouds exponentially decreases with, an, uh, with increasing virial parameter. Uh, this virial parameter can be expressed as a, a ratio of uh, characteristic time scales for turbulence and uh, gravity. For turbulence, it's a crossing time uh, on the scale of uh, GMC with a typical uh, velocity dispersion. So as uh, this parameter goes up, importance of turbulence in the cloud increases. Uh, it provides more and more support. And therefore, star formation rate exponentially decreases. So this model uh, predicts uh, that uh, efficiency uh, of star formation may vary if uh, uh, turbulent properties of the cloud uh, vary. Uh, and also, uh, it doesn't imply any explicit threshold. Uh, so the efficiency is just monotonic function of uh, viral parameter. Uh, and actually, this fitting formula uh, agrees nicely with the results of other authors uh, done similar kind of simulations shown here by different stars. And this is good. We can uh, use this uh, prescription in uh, galaxy formation simulations. Uh, if we assume that uh, each cell in our simulation is this uh, turbulent box simulated by Padon et al., and then we can use this fitting formula to estimate local uh, star formation efficiency in each cell, and then form star, stars accordingly. Uh, however, here's the problem. Uh, this um, efficiency requires knowledge of uh, crossing time on the GMC scale, uh, and this scale is never resolved in Gauss simulation simulations. So some sort of uh, subgrid modeling for turbulence is required. Uh, last time I already gave talk on this and explained you uh, how we do this. Uh, the model can be summarized uh, with a set of very simple equations. Uh, I told you, uh, I explained you the uh, uh, meaning of every term in this set of equations last, last time, so I won't go through it again. I, I believe you all remember it. But if not, if not, you can go and check out this original paper by Schmidt et al., or you can ask me later for details if you want. Um, but in short, we model new extra energy field, which corresponds to uh, total turbulent energy on unresolved scales. Uh, this field is uh, sourced by uh, turbulent cascade from large scales, and uh, from uh, small scales it's sorted by supernova, and then it decays in, uh, into heat. So knowing this uh, turbulent energy, we can derive local uh, turbulent dispersion, uh, turbulent velocity dispersion, and then use this uh, to estimate local efficiency. So as Andre told you, we uh, use this model in isolated uh, disk simulations using uh, Agora initial conditions at the moderate resolution of 40 parsec in order to then use it in cosmological simulations. So and this is our results for uh, the turbulent model. Uh, so uh, the left panel shows uh, turbulent velocity dispersion on the subgrid scale. So you can see that um, the turbulent velocities are maintained at level of, of from few to 10% by developing disk instabilities. And also you can see some uh, hot turbulent patches, which correspond to recent events of uh, supernova. Uh, and then if you take this uh, distribution and uh, derive a local star formation efficiency, you will see quite a bit of variation. And this variation is much larger than uh, that predicted by models, say, uh, where uh, efficiency is, uh, is modulated by uh, molecular hydrogen fraction. 
so you can, we can compare them. And we see that turbulent model predicts uh, patches of uh, enhanced star formation with efficiencies of up to 10%, where some regions do not form stars at all. For example, the, the Earth center, which is uh, supported by turbulent motions. And we can look more uh, quantitatively into this variation if we look at the distrib phase distribution of star formation efficiency and uh, gas density. So the shape of this distribution is, sh is set by interplay between uh, local gravity and support against gravity. And the support can be provided both by turbulence and by thermal motions. So we can see that and there is a sharp density cutoff at about uh, 10 particles per cubic centimeter, which is which uh, and this, this density corresponds to the uh, density at which gas, gas becomes warm. So here, gas is warm and it's well supported. It, it's well supported uh, uh, against. Uh, it's, it's well supported against um, uh, fragmentation, so it, uh, it doesn't form stars. But in cold gas, we see this uh, wide variation, and the most stars, uh, most stars are actually formed in this tip of the distribution. So the 80% of stars are formed at, uh, the level, uh, at the efficiencies of few percent. So this, this is very important for feedback because uh, uh, this means that uh, star formation is clustered and feedback is also clustered and therefore it's more efficient in driving winds. Um, so uh, for feedback we use um, uh, results by Martin Soto who parameterized total thermal energy and uh, generated momentum in the uh, supernova bubble expanding into non-uniform medium. We assume that this, this evolution happens on our subgrid models and whenever supernova goes off we inject this amount of momentum into the central cell and distribute the rest of momentum over, uh, over neighbors. Uh, but as we learned from yesterday talk by uh, Eric Gentry, this momentum can be underestimated by, by uh, a lot of reasons. Um, so we consider boosting of momentum by a factor of up to 10 to be within a reasonable range uh, for models of feedback to be explored. And so let's first see how disk structure responds to uh, the um, boost of feedback. So if we look, uh, so this is the gas density, temperature, and turbulence velocities, and uh, this run is without uh, any uh, feedback, uh, any momentum boost. But if we boost it by a factor of two, we see that this becomes more shredded because uh, uh, feedback evacuates gas from the regions of active star formation, and this is one of the usual way uh, of suppression of star formation by feedback. However, Another important uh, channel uh, of feedback is that uh, uh, disk also becomes more turbulent. And more turbulence implies uh, more support, and therefore star formation rate also goes down. Uh, the distribution of turbulent velocities in cold gas is something that can be uh, compared to observations. Uh, this uh, uh, data appeared recently, and uh, it shows distribution of uh, uh, turbulent velocities measured on uh, 60 parsec scale and gas surface densities uh, in six nearby uh, galaxies. And then, uh, so this distribution shows these values uh, averaged on over large patches, uh, uh, 500 parsec si uh, size. Uh, if I put my galaxy here, without uh, any uh, boost, I have uh, somewhat low um, turbulent velocities. However, if I increase uh, the feedback strength uh, at about a factor of five, uh, we get a more or less correct normalization uh, seen, by, seen in uh, nearby uh, spirals. So the effect on uh, turbulent velocity is sublinear. So when I increase uh, feedback by momentum by a factor of 10, turbulent velocity increased only by a factor of less than uh, two. However, the uh, turbulence enters uh, uh, expression for star formation efficiency exponentially. So the effect on star formation is more significant. We can look at the local uh, data. So this is the, one of the plots Andre showed in his talk. So this is the uh, local distribution of star formation rates. And Without any feedback, we, uh, without any uh, boost of momentum, we get somewhat high normalization, but with uh, and some, somewhat tight uh, um, star distribution of star formation rates. However, still in quite reasonable agreement with observations. And when we uh, increase the amount of injected momentum, we uh, start recovering both uh, normalization and scatter. So uh, we can go to larger scales and check how it looks like on uh, these diagrams, and we can see that uh, whenever it's in kiloparsec scales, our galaxy lies somewhere near um, Milky Way data points, and uh, uh, as we increase uh, in amount of injected momentum, uh, to global uh, star formation rate uh, decreases uh, sublinearly, but stays within 
reasonable grim so it's a uh, shift towards uh, uh, big data um, we also tried uh, to uh, uh, try our prescription in somewhat different regime so this is the galaxy I showed I showed you before this is a, a global uh, star formation a global star formation rate a global uh, global King Schmidt relation so this is the galaxy I showed before and this is uh, the galaxy with uh, twice more gas, so this is the gas-rich galaxy, and with the boosted feedback, it stays. It lie, uh, b both galaxies lie within uh, close to observe uh, relation for star-forming galaxies. Um, so stay tuned for cosmological runs with this prescription. Um, as a summary, my, uh, the turbulent implementation for star formation predicts uh, general low efficiencies, so the efficiencies. Uh, obtained and most of the ga um, gas mass forms starts at efficiencies less than uh, one percent, uh, and it also predicts wide, wide variation and uh, a natural cutoff at density at which gas becomes cold. And then, if we also include a realistic prescription for feedback, we can simultaneously recover many observable properties such as uh, uh, tur turbulent velocities on small scales and star formation rates uh, on the wide range of scales from local GMCs to Kalparsic scales and even global uh, galactic scales. Thank you. So any comments or questions? And uh, Jeremy, could you get set up? I thought this was a great talk. Uh, I have two questions for you. So one is, you have these Navier-Stokes like like terms that you add mm -hmm. uh, to your uh, hydro equations. Usually, when people have done this in the past, they have to calibrate the um, efficiency of the cascade from resolved scales to unresolved scales by doing turbulent simulations, where you can actually see the inertial range in the simulations. Have you have you done that to calibrate these numbers, or do you? Yeah. Yeah, actually, this model was calibrated on the simulations of uh, high-resolution high simulations of developed turbulence. So we uh, we require this model to recover a total uh, uh, total energy on a scale on on a scale on a scale at which it applies. Yeah. Okay. So so that's great. So that allows you to calculate the velocity dispersion on scales that you don't resolve just yes. based on this inflow of energy. Yes. But it, you know, it's not just the velocity dispersion that will change, but the density distribution of the gas on the unresolved scale will act like a turbulent fluid as well. So do you account for the expected spread or density distributions in the turbulent fluid that you're not capturing that will have the velocity dispersion that you measure? Uh, you mean taking account like, like the pumping factor on the unresolved scale? The fact that it's all, you know, might be an isothermal supersonic fluid log normal with a width that scales with the Mach number in some way that you calculate the Mach number, so. Uh, you, you mean can, can, whether we can like uh, Come up with a model for a compact factor on the results. Yeah, I'm just yeah. That's basically yeah. what I'm asking for. Yeah, yeah. A, you can you can make some assumptions. You can assume that on a subgrid scale, it's like developed turbulence with a given like Mach, Mach number, and then you can integrate it and get a compact factor. Have you tried anything? Uh, no, but we are going to do this. We're going to include it in like pooling functions and other. Okay, to stay on track, uh, let's move on to Jeremy. And remember that there will be uh, plenty of time for discussion.